Hello and welcome to Optics Lab. Now in today's lab we're going to study three different properties of optics. First of all, the inverse square relationship. Secondly, Snell's law. And last of all, lenses. Now the inverse square relationship works on the idea that when light emanates outward from a point source, at any distance r, the radius away from that source, you can imagine sort of an imaginary sphere and that light is spread out evenly along the surface of that spherical shell. Now as the radius increases, the area of that spherical shell increases with the square of the radius. And so the distribution of light actually decreases then the amount of intensity of light decreases then with the square of that radius as it propagates outward in a three-dimensional space. So one way to take a look and examine that <coughs> inverse square relationship between light and the distance from the source of the light is we can do that using this optics table. Here I have a light sensor and this light sensor is attached to our vernier lab pro which attaches to the computer and it reads intensity of light. Now here on this optical bench I have a light source that I can I can turn this aperture around until I get the circular aperture here and I put it at a fixed distance around 10 centimeters and now when I use this attachment to hold my light sensor up to the front here I can examine the relationship between distance and intensity by watching the intensity on the computer screen. And so you'll actually make a graph of intensity, light intensity, and distance. Now the graph won't be the normal time-based graph that Logger Pro defaults to. It'll be based on a data acquisition system called events with entry. So it records discrete events rather than um, data points acquired at even time intervals. It'll be events that you're recording. The instructions will tell you how to, how to do that. The next thing we'll look at in activity two is Snell's law. And that involves this laser. You see there's some tape on it because there's a cylindrical lens in front of this laser pointer which divides the laser up into a vertical beam. And so the tape is here to prevent the beam from coming up too high and interacting with your eyes that much. But when you set this down, the beam crosses across the tabletop and you can see the line across this white sheet of paper. Now I have a set of equations that I'd like for you to take a look at. And these equations deal with Snell's law. Now as you can see, this purple line is a light beam. It comes down and is incident on a piece of glass. And as it strikes that glass, it's refracted through the glass, then out the other side. Do you see how it's bent? <clears throat> now imagine a normal line. This dashed line is a normal line. Normal means perpendicular to the surface. So this line is normal to the surface of this glass square. And this glass square is represented by this cube, which is traced onto the piece of paper. This beam of light represents the laser light that passes through the glass cube when you shine it through there. It's refracted in this way. And so there's an angle that you can measure with respect to the normal line and the incoming ray. And then after you lift the traced glass and, and continue, you know, draw your line through before you turn the laser off and move it, you have this other angle, which is the angle between the refracted ray through the glass and the normal line that passes through the glass as well. These two angles, theta 1 and theta 2. Now, the relationship between these two angles is described by Snell's law. It says N1 times sine theta 1 is equal to N2 times sine theta 2. Now N1 and N2 describe the mediums that the light is passing through. N 
is the relative speed of light in a medium compared to the speed of light in a vacuum. And so the larger the value of n, the slower light is traveling through that medium. So n1 is the air, is, is the index of refraction of air. So it's pretty much equal to the speed of light in a vacuum. So n1 is equal to around 1. But now n2 is larger because it's the index of refraction of glass. And so light slows down as it enters glass, and that's why you get this refraction toward the normal, and it follows this equation called Snell's Law. On the way out of the glass, it does the same thing, except now it's incident from the inside to the outside. So it's sort of the opposite. So using Snell's Law, <coughs> if you measure these angles and know what the index of refraction of air is, you can calculate the index of refraction of glass and compare it to a known range of index of refractions of glass, indices of refraction of glass. The final activity of this lab involves lenses. So I want to remove my light sensor and I have a lens here. This is a convex lens and it doesn't come out of the holder. Don't try to take it out of here. Um, if you focus distant light onto a screen, you can use that to determine what the focal length of the lens is. The focal length of the lens is the distance to where light entering the lens comes and focuses to one tight point. That's the focal length of the lens. Now, let's define a few more terms. When I place it between the light source, which is the object, and this screen here, which is where the image will be displayed, Several, dis several measurements become important. This distance between the object and the lens is called the object distance, D subscript O. This distance between the lens and the image is called the image distance, D subscript I. And there is a relationship that relates the focal length to these two distances. And so as you can see here, one over the focal length is equal to one over DI, the image distance, divided by 1 over DO, the object distance. Now when you have lens uh, set up like this where the object and the image are at a fixed distance apart, there are exactly two positions of the lens that can create a focused image here at the screen. And that's when DI or DO are at certain values and they're conjugates of each other, so it doesn't matter which is here or there, you still get a focused image on the screen. Now the difference is the magnification. So if we have the lens here and we project it onto the screen there, the magnification is going to be different than if we find another position where we get a focused image on the screen, it's going to give a totally different magnification. And the magnification is calculated in this way. The magnification is equal to the ratio of di over do. So if di is larger than do, you're going to get a magnification greater than 1, or if at the other position, a magnification less than 1. And more straightforward, magnification is simply the height of the image divided by the height of the object. So if the image is bigger than the object, then you have a magnification that's greater than 1. To measure that, you would simply measure the size of the image compared to the size of the object.